All right, um, I'm going to go very fast so that Jens, you know, doesn't kick me off the stage too quickly. Uh, my name is James, and I'm here to tell you about the very best feature of C++. So C++ has a lot of fantastic features, and I admit I had a very hard time trying to pick one that was my favorite. So which one did I pick? Well, one option was certainly templates. Templates make it easy to write generic, reusable code, um, and they also make it really easy to produce enormous, incomprehensible errors. Um, so they're just all around awesome. But they are not my favorite feature in C++. Another option I considered was the closing brace. So John Kalb gave a talk yesterday in which he described this as C++'s defining feature. And really what he meant and what we all love here is the fact that destructors for local variables run when you reach the end of a closing brace. Now, I don't agree with John about everything, but I do agree that John, with John that this brace is wonderful. But that's not my favorite feature either. My favorite feature is function pointers. Function pointers are just so beautiful and they work so amazingly that they are incomparable to any other feature in C++. So let's look at function pointers. So let's say we've got in our program a little add function, and it takes two numbers, and it adds them together and returns the result. Then in our program, we can call this function to add, the two, add two numbers together. Are there any questions about this? Hopefully this makes sense to everyone. I know this is getting pretty advanced already. Um, all right, so this program is fine. It works. Um, but I just feel like something is missing. Like, there's not much indirection here. And we all know that indirection you know, makes, it, makes programs better, right? So let's add some indirection by using a function pointer. So we have this add function. Well, how do we get a pointer to it? Well, we use the address of operator, just like if we have an int object, we use the address of operator to get a pointer to it. And once we have that pointer, we can actually have a variable of function pointer type. And you see it uses this beautiful syntax here. Um, and so now this function pointer points to the add function. And inside of our main function, we can then dereference that pointer to get the function back, and we can pass you know, two numbers to it to do an addition. So this works just like the previous fun uh, version. It's just better. But I feel like, you know, we can still add some more indirection to generalize this further and to improve it. So let's say that now our, our program has two functions. I know, you know, how many programs do we write that have two whole functions in them? But we've now got a mole function also that multiplies the two numbers together. And let's say we want to write a function that will take two numbers and we'll call one of these, you know, whichever one we tell it to call. Well, we're going to need a function named call, and it's going to take the two numbers. It's also going to need to take the function pointer as a parameter. So here again, beautiful syntax. Um, and then inside of it, it's just going to dereference that function pointer. It's going to pass the two um, uh, numbers that we've passed into it, and then it's going to return the result. In our program here, we can see, well, now we can call that with either add or mull. So now you see this is generic code. This is very general here. Um, so things are looking much better. Uh, but maybe that's not quite sufficient for all of our use cases. So let's say we still have those two functions, but now we want to write a function that will take a condition and two function pointers, and if the condition is true, it'll return the first one, and if the condition is false, it'll return the second one. Well, here's how we would do that. You know, we have the three parameters there, but what's the return type? Well, the return type is another function pointer, and again, you can see this beautiful syntax, and here's an example of how we might use it. But what happens if in our program, We've got multiple pick functions. So we've got you know, multiple of these, and maybe I want to pick one of these. Well, we can do the exact same thing. We just need some more uh, syntax. This actually compiles, just so you know, like all of this code I, I tested with Visual C++ and GCC. So it just requires a little more punctuation. So by now, you can all see like, that right, we should all be pretty amazed, I'm sure, by how beautiful function pointers are. But there's one feature in particular about them that makes me truly love them. So let's go back to this program. So in this program, we're taking the address of the add function to get a pointer to it. But it turns out that there's this phenomenal feature in C++ where a function is implicitly convertible to a pointer to itself. So here, we don't actually need to use the ampersand to get the address. If we remove the ampersand, then what will happen is the compiler will implicitly convert the function to a pointer to itself and then store that pointer in the variable. And I can see all of you out there now, you're like, OK, so what? That's not so cool at all. Now you've removed an ampersand. So what? Well, we haven't seen the cool part yet. When we actually use the function pointer, we're dereferencing it in order to call the pointed to function. But when we dereference that function pointer, what do we get? Well, we get the function back. Um, and that function is implicitly converted, convertible to a pointer to itself, which we can dereference again. So here, we, can, we dereference the function pointer. We get the function. It then is implicitly converted into the function pointer again, which we dereference again. And it turns out that we can just keep adding asterisks. <laughs> as many asterisks as we like, and it's still valid C++ code. We can, if we'd like, add hundreds of asterisks. <laughs> and I'm sure you will all agree with me that this is clearly better than any of the other you know, programs that we've been looking at so far. 
That said, I understand if you're a little concerned. Perhaps you're worried that you know, when you go back to you know, work, your colleagues won't understand the, this advanced programming technique that you've learned. Or maybe your manager won't let you come back to meeting C++ again because now your colleagues don't understand all of this, these advanced techniques you've learned. Or maybe you're just worried that you know, you'll come back to this code later and you won't remember how it works. Well, that, my friends, is what comments are for. And the best news here is we have a particularly elegant way to comment this code. Thank you very much.